Hello, lovely students. It's great to see you. My name is Miss Whitman, and I'm one of the two teachers who will be teaching your summer course. Hello, lovely young people. It's great to see you. My name is Miss Whitman, and I'm one of the two teachers who will be instructing you this summer for your incoming grade six summer language arts instruction. The other teacher you'll be having is Mrs. Tosh, and you will meet her very soon if you haven't already. I just wanted to uh, record a little uh, lesson based on what we did this past Monday so that anyone who wasn't able to attend the Google Meet can now have a sense of what we did. So the first thing we did is we introduced ourselves and quickly um, kind of gave you a little background. Just so you know, Mrs. Tosh and I are two of the three teachers who teach sixth grade. Actually, there's really four. So there's um, Mrs. Tosh who teaches sixth grade and eighth grade language arts. And then there's me. I teach mostly writing and then one language arts class for sixth grade. And then there's Mrs. Tinges, who teaches both writing and language arts for sixth grade. And then there's also Mrs. Turcott, and she teaches a class called Read 180. So um, you will be in classes with either one of us or two of us. You might have one of us for writing and one of us for language arts. And I know you're probably dying to know your schedule for the fall, but I have to say I don't know what it is either. We won't be able to tell you until, um, until about August or so when the counselors figure out the schedules for this coming year. Um, but for this summer, Mrs. Tosh and I will be your teachers, and I wanted to give you a quick overview of what we did this past Monday so that any students who were not here or missed um, information will get a chance to see it again. So right now, you'll see the screen I'm on here is your Google Classroom page for our class. So it's called Summer ELA 6, and you should all be enrolled in there. Um, if for some reason you don't have the information, here is the class code right here. Um, ooh, look at that class code. So if you need to pause right here and get yourself logged into our Google Classroom, you can do that. But I think most of you are in it. So that is great. So this is what we'll use to post all of your assignments. You'll have a live class every Monday. For your class, it'll be from 11 until noon. So 11 to 12 on Mondays for the next seven weeks. Um, that doesn't include this week. It's eight weeks total. So you will come onto our live Google Meet using this link right here. It says Meet Link. So you'll just go to Google Classroom, click on that link, and it'll take you to our live Google Meet. We had a little bit of lagging on Monday, so that may be a problem. But just make sure you do your best to show up. If you get kicked out, just come right back. And if you miss something, we'll fill you in. And I'll be making a recorded lesson, too. So if you miss something and you need to look back at it again, you can always go to the recording. I'm also really sorry for the really super annoying noise behind me. Someone is using power tools in the house next door and it's very irritating. So I hope it's not too much of a bother. Maybe you can't hear it. I promise it is there. I'm not going crazy. Anyway, um, so your Google Classroom is where all your assignments will be posted. On Wednesdays of each week, we'll have office hours. So that if you have questions about an assignment or if you need help or if you just want to see my smiling face on Wednesdays from 11 to 12, you'll be able to do that. Um, that is optional. You do not have to come on Wednesday. It's just if you need help or if you want to say hello or if you have a question of some kind, okay? So the only required time when you really need to make a point of showing up is Monday from 11 to 12. On some Mondays, I'll be the teacher. On other Mondays, it'll be Mrs. Tosh. We're going to be alternating. So you might see me for teaching, like this Monday, I'll be the teacher, but on Wednesday, Mrs. Tosh will be free for office hours. So if you have questions, you can reach out to both of us and we're both available to help you. All right, so this past Monday, we introduced our theme for the week, which is character development. So you should be pretty familiar, I think, with what we well, you know what characters are and you know what it means to develop, to change over time. So we're basically examining how characters change over the course of a story. And to help us do that, we shared with you guys a document. So in your Google Classroom, there is a link that says, um, character development lesson, direct instruction. And under that assignment, you'll find a link to your very own character development story map. And this is a little organizer that I designed to help us think about how characters change, okay? So each one of you has a copy of this that's made specifically for you that you can edit. And it's kind of annoying to edit. I don't know why it is this way, but basically for you to edit it, you have to double click on the actual image and then it'll pop up as a drawing. And the drawing is where you'll be able to actually add in your responses and um, your notes. So what we looked at on Monday was a story in Common Lit called Blue Sky Home. Now, Common Lit, you should all have a login because I synced it up with our Google Classroom. So as long as you're in the Google Classroom, you're also enrolled in the Common Lit. So what you do to get to the Common Lit is you log in to the Common, you go to commonlit.org, you can click on the link provided in Classroom, 
and then you're going to click on login with Google and use your school Google information to log in. And then you should already be enrolled in our class. There should be a little bell notification that will tell you about any new assignments that are posted. All right. So if you go into Common Lit now, you'll see that you've been assigned a text called Blue Sky Home. And it looks like this at the top. It's by Lisa Papa Demetrio. And it is, um, it's the text we're going to be working with that we looked at on Monday. All right. So another cool thing about Common Lit is that you guys can actually annotate directly within the Common Lit site. And it will save your annotations. So to do that, all you have to do is highlight the text that you're annotating. And then if you, for example, if I highlighted this text, up pops up this little option where I can either highlight it in a certain color. I can remove the highlight if I highlight it by accident, or I can add a little text annotation where I type something, and then after I type it, I could say, grandfather, winked, and then I could click on done, boop, and I have an annotation. That's a really silly annotation, so I'm gonna delete it now. But you wanna be, as you're doing your common lit assignments, really using that annotation tool. It's a really good way to help you. All right, so we're gonna read the story through together just like we did on Monday as a class, and I'm gonna show you how I would annotate this story. And we always want to first read the little um, synopsis at the top. It doesn't let you annotate this, but it's still important to read. So it says, Blue Sky Home by Lisa Papa Demetrio. Then it says, Lisa Papa Demetrio has written for highlights. In this short story, a girl struggles to get her grandfather to accept her identity. As you read, take notes on why Phoebe's grandfather wants her to see the real Greece. Now, even though this common lit instructions tell you to think about one thing, since we're focusing on character development, I want you to really be thinking about how Phoebe develops as a character over the story. And remember, when we talk about how characters develop, we're just talking about how do they change? What traits do they develop or what traits grow or improve? What actions change over the course of the story? Okay, so as we read, we're going to be specifically thinking about how is Phoebe changing? What is Phoebe like at the beginning? What is she like at the end of the story? All right, so here we go. We start here with paragraph one. Grandfather turned to Phoebe and winked. Now you see the real Greece, he said, pulling up to an ancient stone house. A woman grandfather's age bustled toward them. Phoebe unfolded herself from the car and hung back uncertainly as grandfather wrapped his enormous arms around the tiny lady. Vasiliki, this is my granddaughter Phoebe, grandfather said. Phoebe, meet my good friend Vasiliki. Then he continued talking to Vasiliki in Greek. All right, so the first thing I notice here about Phoebe is that it says Phoebe unfolded herself from the car and hung back uncertainly. So that makes me think that maybe Phoebe's feeling a little bit insecure, a little bit reluctant about the situation. So it also seems like maybe this is Phoebe's first time in Greece because grandfather says, now you see the real Greece which makes me think that maybe she only had an idea of it in her head from before. So I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to add text and I'm going to say, Phoebe seems a little nervous and reluctant. She doesn't seem to have been to Greece before. And that's how I'm gonna do my first little annotation here. Boop. So now I'm gonna continue reading says he's probably explaining that we're heading to the village where he grew up, Phoebe thought. For about the thousandth time, she wished her father had taught her a little Greek, just enough so that she could make some polite conversation and didn't have to stand there like a lump. Well, this is interesting. So this part makes me think that maybe Phoebe's a little bit embarrassed that she doesn't know very much about her family's culture because she really wishes that someone had taught her some Greek. And she's probably feeling a little bit awkward too because they're having this conversation that she can't understand. I don't know if any of you have ever been in a situation where people are having a conversation in another language and you feel like, what are you saying? I know that happened to me a lot when I was studying abroad in Spain. So I'm gonna write here, let's say Phoebe seems to be feeling uncomfortable and maybe a little resentful that she knows so little about, or she knows so little Greek, we'll say, all right? And we'll continue on. When she had first arrived at the airport, her grandfather had been eager to show her the real Greece. You need to see this, he announced. You are Greek. This is your country. Well, Phoebe had said that first day, I'm only half Greek. Really, I'm American. What is it to be American? Grandfather snorted. No, you are Greek. Now, this is interesting because it seems like maybe Phoebe is identifying herself in a somewhat different way than her grandfather is identifying her. So when she says, I'm only half Greek, really, I'm American, it seems like maybe she's not as proud of her Greek heritage as her grandfather is, or maybe she just sees herself differently. 
I'm going to say Phoebe seems to see herself differently than her grandfather sees her. She doesn't seem especially proud of her Greek heritage. So I'm going to keep that little annotation for myself. Phoebe didn't want to tell grandfather that Greece didn't feel like her country. The sky was so blue it hurt her eyes for one thing. The toilets had buttons instead of handles, and she could hardly even talk to people. Hmm, it seems to me like here Phoebe is being a little bit childish, like she's worried about things that really don't seem that worrisome. She's worried about the sky being too blue and the toilets having buttons. Those seem like kind of minor concerns. Um, so maybe we could say something like, um, well, at least to me, it seems like Phoebe is complaining about some things that aren't that important. So maybe she's just being a little childish here. Now Vasiliki said something in Greek and blinked at Phoebe expectantly. I'm sorry, Phoebe said to her, I don't speak Greek. Vasiliki turned to grandfather wide-eyed with horror. She don't speak Greek? Grandfather shrugged and made a clicking sound with his teeth. It's okay, Vasiliki said sympathetically. I tried to speak English with you. Grandfather gestured to the crumbling stone buildings that surrounded them. Maybe we go for a walk later, he told Phoebe. You see the town is very old. Vasiliki said something in Greek and grandfather hooted with laughter. Phoebe smiled hesitantly. What, she asked. He <laughs> he, grandfather shook his head. She say, Vasiliki finished for him. If you go in, take a string so you find your way out. You know they made these towns like a labyrinth, grandfather explained, because of the foreign pirates. They could get into the town, Vasiliki said, but they couldn't get out. Her dark eyes gleamed playfully. Nay, said grandfather. Yes, his eyes grew thoughtful. Phoebe wondered if he was thinking about the pirates. Ever since Phoebe had arrived in Greece, she'd begun to realize that her grandfather didn't really trust anyone who wasn't Greek. She had never seen this side of him before, and it made her a little uneasy. Okay, so a lot of things have happened here. First of all, Phoebe's again getting that experience of having people speaking another language, and she doesn't know what's going on. And so that's got to be kind of frustrating. But then we get down here, and it says she's realizing that her grandfather didn't really trust anyone who wasn't Greek. And I see a key word here. The word realize makes me think that maybe she's discovering something. Maybe something's changing in her. And remember, we're focusing as we read on how Phoebe changes. So here we could say something about, hmm, Phoebe doesn't seem to, or doesn't understand her grandfather's way of, hmm, way of seeing people. She thinks he is, or we could say she seems to think he is, judgy of people who aren't Greek. No. How is your father? Vasiliki asked. I don't see him since he was baby. You have photo? Phoebe hesitated, then dug into her bag and pulled out a picture taken on her 12th birthday. That's my dad on the left, she said. Beautiful, beautiful, Vasiliki said, squinting at the photo. Grandfather leaned in to look at the picture. Who is this, he asked suspiciously. Phoebe didn't have to look at the photo to know which person he was pointing to. That's my best friend, Phoebe replied, Nadia. Vasiliki held the photo to closer to her eyes. What is she, she asked. For a moment, Phoebe wasn't sure how to respond. She knew what Vasiliki meant. What is Nadia's heritage? The answer was that Nadia's parents were from Karachi, Pakistan. Phoebe could have just answered the question but Nadia wasn't from Pakistan. She was from Teaneck, New Jersey. She's American, Phoebe said at last, like me. Okay, so again, a lot going on here. It seems interesting that Phoebe is immediately hesitant to show that picture. I wonder if it's because she knows that her grandfather's gonna say something about this friend, Nadia. I'm also thinking that he probably is wondering about Nadia because I'm guessing maybe she's wearing a headscarf or some sort of clothing that shows that she is of a different heritage. But down here where it says Phoebe wasn't sure how to respond, and she said that even though Nadia's parents were from Pakistan, Nadia is American. So it seems like here we're getting this idea that maybe Phoebe has a different way of defining 
who someone is than her grandfather does. So let's see, we'll say Phoebe seems to define people differently or people in a different way than her grandfather does. She seems frustrated that he is making judgments based on where someone's parents are from. So it seems like for, for Phoebe, it's more important to think about where Nadia lives now, but for grandfather, it seems it's more about where does her family come from. Grandfather looked at her sharply and Phoebe half expected him to tell her again that she was Greek, not American. Grandfather tugged at his beard, then looked at the photo one more time. Pretty girl, he said finally. He looked back at Phoebe and something in his eyes softened. Phoebe exhaled. She hadn't even realized she was holding her breath. The air here was sweet like honey. My grandfather loves me, Phoebe realized. There's that word again, realized. He loves me and he wants to share being Greek with me. And for the first time, the strange country with its sky so blue it hurt to look at started to feel a little more like home. Wow, what a beautiful ending. So over here where it says, grandfather tugged at his beard and then said, he looked at Nadia again in the picture and he said, pretty girl, and then looked at Phoebe and something in his eyes softened. It seems like here, maybe Phoebe's not the only one changing in this story because it looks to me like maybe grandfather's changing too. So we could say something like, is grandfather possibly realizing that Nadia and Phoebe are more alike than he first thought. Grandfather seems to be becoming more understanding of Phoebe. And I think that's really important because once grand once grandmother once grandfather softens and is understanding of Phoebe, what happens to Phoebe? It says, my grandfather loves me, Phoebe realized. He loves me and he wants to share being Greek with me. So here, Phoebe discovers that the most important thing is that her grandfather loves her. They may be different, but their love is the most important thing. This is really a key moment in the story because before Phoebe was kind of like, Eh, I don't want to be here. I don't like this. The sky is too blue. But guess what? At the last paragraph, it says, for the first time, the strange country with its sky so blue it hurt to look at started to feel a little more like home. So I love that they titled this story Blue Sky Home because it seems like she goes from thinking this blue sky is too blue to thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I just need to adjust a little. Maybe there's something to be appreciated in this. So that's a big moment. Um, so here, I would also want to put a note and say, Let's see, are they running out? Oh, there we go. Thought it was gonna not let me annotate. So we'll say, Phoebe now seems to see, find a bit more of home in the same blue skies that were uncomfortable before. All right, so as you can see, we're looking at a lot of changes in Phoebe. And so you have that organizer that was shared with you and that's gonna help you to go ahead and fill it out um, with the information. So if we go in here, you can see that on the left side of the organizer, it says beginning. On the right side, it says end. And then you have the same questions above and below that you have beginning, you have above and below the end. And then in the middle, you have what may be the most important arrow, which is where it says change. What caused the change? So let's start with the beginning. At the beginning of the story, if we go back to our annotations to think about what was Phoebe like at the beginning, how would we describe her? I know some of the words we used early on was we said she was reluctant and uncomfortable and maybe a little bit resentful. So I'm just gonna put, and you don't have to put full sentences for this, you could put reluctant, uncomfortable, resentful. Doesn't seem happy to be in Greece. This can just be kind of like your simple notes here. Then down here under her actions, what does she do? How does she treat others? So I think we could say she kind of hangs back from her grandfather. I know that when she says she unfolded herself from the car and then kind of hung back. Um, we could say that she um, doesn't say very much at the beginning. Um, so those are, those are some actions we could start with. 
Then let's go to the end of the story. How would you describe Phoebe at the end of the story? So we go back to our annotations again, and it says that, let's see, we wrote that she seems to, um, she seems to have realized that her grandfather loves her and that she's realized that that's a little bit more important than some of the other things that are upsetting her. And then she also is starting to see Greece as more of a home, more of a place where she identifies. So we could say, how would you describe the character? Um, more open, maybe, and um, more accepting of others who are different. And then under her actions, we could say one thing. When we talk about actions, we can also be thinking about things they say. So we could say um, respond kindly to grandfather's questions about Nadia. That's a big moment. And chooses to show Vasiliki the picture because it said she was hesitant, but she still eventually chooses to be open and to show the picture to them. So then we have to come down here to this change. What caused this change in Phoebe? And there's, there's not necessarily one right answer, but for me, I think what I see is the biggest moment of change is this moment when grandfather's eyes soften and he chooses to say something kind instead of saying something judgmental. And when Phoebe sees that softening, it says she exiled. She exhaled. She hadn't even realized she was holding her breath. And then she says, my grandfather loves me, she realized. So I think that's a really key moment where she starts to see like, okay, this is my family and I want to learn more about this. So I would say under what caused the character to change, grandfather's change in attitude seems to spark a change in Phoebe's mindset. So this is how you would complete this organizer. But then you think you're done. But the next step would be to actually write a summary in which you explain how the character changes. So over the course of this next week, your assignments are going to be asking you to either fill out an organizer like this, it'll be the same exact type, and or write a an answer to a question where it'll say watch this video or listen to this story or read this article and then explain how the character develops over the course of the text so this is what you would use this organizer to help you to write that paragraph so if i was going to respond to a question that said how does the character phoebe change in the story blue sky home by lisa papa Demetrio? did i say her name right I think I did. Yes, I did. So if I had a question that asked, how does Phoebe develop as a character throughout the story, Blue Sky Home? I would respond by saying in the story, and notice how I'm restating my question and the answer, in the story, Blue Sky Home by Lisa Papa Demetrio. And always check your spelling to make sure it's right. The main character, Phoebe, changes throughout the story. And then I would use some nice transition phrases. So for example, in the beginning of the story, and I can go back to my organizer to help me. In the beginning of the story, Phoebe is, we said she's reluctant and uncomfortable and resentful. Okay, so Phoebe seems to be unhappy about being in Greece with her grandfather. She is reluctant to engage in conversation and she feels out of place and a little bit judged. Especially, I'm gonna be specific here, especially because her grandfather seems to be very concerned no, very, hmm, how do we want to say this? Her grandfather seems to be, seems to be, hmm, seems to want her to value her Greekness. Wait a minute, let's just say seems to value Greekness over other character traits. However, as the story progresses, Phoebe and her grandfather have a conversation and grandfather, how do I describe it? And grandfather seems a little judgmental at first, but then changes his attitude and shows Phoebe that he loves her 
simply because she is his granddaughter. And then I could say something like, when Phoebe realizes that her grandfather loves her, her attitude changes and she becomes more open and willing to embrace her surroundings. Okay. So that's an example of what I would want you to do if I asked you a question like this. Um, and so during the next week or two weeks, Mrs. Tosh and I are going to be giving you lots of different texts to read and asking you this same type of question. How does the character develop? How does the character change? So this is what we talked about on Monday. And then the last thing we asked you to do on Monday, which if you haven't done it um, yet, you should definitely do it ASAP. It's really important to do it at the start of the class. So if you haven't done it um, like today, you should absolutely do it. It's very easy. So what we did is we posted on Google Classroom a form and it says, um, let's see, where did it go? Right here. So it's the next posted, the next thing posted after the direct instruction lesson. It says self-assessment character development. And sometimes if you're not sure where to find your classwork, you can just click on the classwork tab too. And that's like an easier way sometimes just to find things. So see here, this is the very first lesson that I'm showing you right now. And then here's the self-assessment link. If you click on that, it takes you to a Google form. It looks like only uh, four people haven't done it yet. So 29 did, which is great. So you would click on this form and it'll just ask you one question. And it'll ask you basically, how confident do you feel about your knowledge of character development? And just be honest and rate yourself based on how much you know. It's not for a grade. In fact, you should know that nothing that you do in the in these courses is actually for like a grade that's going to go in your transcript and determine your future. We're really mostly concerned about giving you feedback and helping you to grow. So it's not about getting an A or a B or a D or anything like that. It's just about growing, okay? So this course, this little form that you're filling out with this one question will help us to see how you've grown because we'll ask you to fill out the same question at the end of the two weeks to see if you've come to understand this topic a little bit better. All right, so that's all I needed to share with you. Um, hopefully this was helpful and if there's anything you feel like um, you'd want me to include in a future rec recording like this, just let me know, send me an email. I'm happy to uh, adjust it or do it to to make, do it differently to help you guys. Um, I'm excited to get to know all of you a little more. This is really cool to get to know you guys before our middle school year officially starts. So um, I'm excited for that and I'm excited to help you to grow a little bit and get ready for a big awesome year at uh, the middle school as sixth graders. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.